So how would you sum up their life story, live fast and die young? It's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Out with a bang, all the, uh, that was all my the colloquialisms. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a new one. Mm, new. Pleasingly, we've found them at both burnt and unburnt habitat here, which is which is great. So these these males are about um, probably a month away or potentially less from our breeding. They get very large testes that fill up with the full complement of sperm for the entire breeding season. And um, that's their downfall because with that comes testosterone. It's the testosterone that causes the failure in the switch to turn off the stress hormone, cortisol. And basically they just get flooded with cortisol during the breeding season and uh, eventually just succumb to that, usually die of internal bleeding. Hair falls off, sometimes they go blind, stumbling around looking for females to mate with. No male lives past its first birthday. So this guy's got about a month to live and hopefully mate with as many girls as possible between now and then. Areas like this, especially here in central Queensland, which you would expect never to burn, uh, wet, dense rainforest, uh, after years of drought and then incredibly hot, dry weather have burnt. And that means species of wildlife, which we thought were immune from bushfires, are now becoming considerably threatened. It's going to have affected the populations in a significant way. We can't escape that. In areas that have been badly burned, it's going to change the vegetation structure. That could have sort of mid to long term impacts. They're tiny. Basically, what I'm trying to do is to explore different kinds of detection techniques to see which ones work better to faster find these species in the national parks that we already know that they are and at the same time trying to map the accurate distribution in the potential habitat. So we have been using a mix of Elliot traps, camera traps and conservation detection dogs but we think that the vegetation structure is changing and it might actually impact their persistence. So yeah, we'll have to keep an ongoing monitoring for the species here. We've been very fortunate to get funding from WWF and it really just gives you scope to, to go, okay, everyone come in and let's all do our thing and really get really data-rich result. Is he still biting and gripping there? Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're both, both sexes are still feisty, but um, there's just that less attitude. Thank you to all our supporters who have helped us to provide the funding and the resources to enable this work on the silver-headed antichinus to take place. We, we couldn't do it without you, and these uh, quirky, obscure little animals uh, won't be able to survive without your help, so thank you. Mm -hmm.